Steve Fullhard here. We've got a couple of guests here to talk about a really cool new community partnership here in the Brassus Valley. The founder and CEO of Make Safe Tech Inc., Caleb Holtz, with us, along with the president and CEO of the Brassus Valley Economic Development Corporation, Matt Prohaska. Caleb, let's start with you. For those who don't know, what is Make Safe Tech Inc. and what is the mission? Awesome. Thank you so much for having us this morning, uh, Steve. We uh, Make Safe Tech is a membership-based nonprofit. And we like to tell people we have a very simple mission. Our job is to bring first responders and our armed forces together with people that make safe tech. So we are a combination of a lot of innovation plays. So we have a co-working space uh, that our membership uh, members get access to. We have prototyping labs, uh, very extensive in electronics manufacturing, additive at scale, a lot of mechanical design uh, work. Uh, and at the same time, we're a resource for companies across the country. And really what we're trying to do with Safe Tech is build out a national innovation ecosystem for public safety and defense-based technologies. And it makes a lot of sense when you start to kind of look at uh, what is available here in the Brazos Valley. I mean, it, it, it made perfect sense to me. I spent 12 years at TEKS, which is the world's largest emergency response training organization, and their reach training 195,000 people a year, uh, it makes a lot of sense that you would have a nonprofit here or that you would have some form of uh, organization that really is supporting innovation in that space. Uh, that was our original intention. And then uh, Army Futures Command went and decided to put the George H.W. Bush Combat Development Center at Rellis Campus and they broke ground in November. And so uh, when we think about it, I, I can't think of anywhere globally uh, that you could go that you would have access to those types of resources. And that's not even to mention the flagship university of the Texas A&M University system and all of the research that they do. Matt, let's talk a little bit about how this partnership is big for the Brazos Valley EDC. I know this is something that our board approved. Why don't you describe a little bit what this partnership is? Thanks, Steve. It's a real privilege to partner um, with Safe Tech and to see all of the work that their team is doing. As far as our organization goes, it's an investment in economic development. So we're grateful to our board of directors for providing some of the seed money to help Caleb and his team um, really set up and get organized and now launch uh, within the community. Caleb, what does this partnership mean for Safe Tech going forward? How does this benefit you all? Well, I, in multiple ways, uh, actually. And so one of the things that I, I can tell you, uh, it's one thing, you know, to travel the country and say that you're from Texas. Uh, it's another thing to travel the country and say the community in which you operate in is a partner, like a legitimate in the mix partner with you. And that when you come to town to visit us, which people do this all the time to access those resources we just talked about throughout the AM system and Teeks that there are people here that are really focused on you as a company and an, as, a, as an organization. Uh, and it helps us uh, maybe not have to do all the work, right? We can say, hey, Matt, can you and Chuck uh, take this company around? Uh, they've got some workforce questions. Uh, they're really interested in the, in the talent pool. I mean, that is actually something that in, in hindsight, and we're you know going through COVID-19 and jobs is a huge issue there is a huge focus of the companies that are our members saying, hey, how could I get access to some of that student talent? How can I get access to this, some of these individuals who lost their summer internships that are now looking for something to do? Because we know that those are the, those are the kids that had the really good jobs and now they're out of a job. Uh, or, you know, we're very privileged. We have two companies that are actually gonna be spinning out of, college, out of our facility uh, into the community this year. Uh, and, you know, where can they locate and what all, you know, are there incentives, are there workforce things, are there anything else that they need to be considering? Uh, and one of the things that I also, you know, I'm very proud of is our focus on use of other local businesses. And I've met several of those, both through the Chamber and the Brazos Valley EDC. And now with this partnership, I have the opportunity to serve on, uh, you know, serve in the Invest Brazos Valley uh, group that BVEDC puts through. And that introduces me to more people uh, both at a banking level, at an insurance level, at a real estate level. And those are people that we need for our businesses uh, because we live by a really simple rule, which is never sole source. I mean, I obviously have people I love to do business with, uh, but I want you to know that, you know, here's other people that you could also make your own decisions 
Uh, and then the other thing, the last thing I'll just mention to you is if you go to a really, really big conference, uh, you're going to see country pavilions. And these country pavilions is always really interesting to be the company that got to be in the Germany pavilion or the Belgian pavilion. You know, we have a great relationship here with the Belgian, uh, with, the, with the entire business community in Belgium with the A&M connection. So I usually stop by that pavilion. Well, we're going to have an opportunity post COVID to have the Brazos Valley Pavilion at a major national conference here in the country. And people know that we went as a partner and these are companies operating in the Brazos Valley. Uh, and that is essentially what I think has been lacking in public safety and defense innovation is there's been a lack of a, a core focus area that you could say, where would I go if I was going to start a business focused in this industry? You can do that for textiles and you can do that for injection molding. You can do it for a medical device, but there was nowhere you could do that for public safety. And having this partnership with the Brazos Valley EDC will make it very clear that the Brazos Valley is where you need to be considering your location. Matt, we've got a three word mission that's uh, pretty simple at the BVEDC. I feel like uh, each of the boxes for those words is ticked off with this relationship. Yeah, it's really exciting to me when I think about it. So as you know, Steve, our mission is to launch, grow, and locate with companies here in the Brazos Valley. And as you just heard from Caleb, Safe Tech does a beautiful job really hitting on every facet of our mission as an organization. So helping those entrepreneurs and technology to innovate and commercialize those ideas, um, supply chain wise, even helping existing industry here in the Brazos Valley to grow. And then last but not least, of course, the traditional site selection of really business attraction to invite new companies to our community. And so we're privileged to work with Safe Tech in all three of those areas. Caleb, you mentioned uh, the success that Safe Tech is going to be seeing with some uh, companies spinning out here coming up later in 2020. I guess maybe you look five years out even or, or 10 years, however long you want to look out. What is the landscape and what are the goals for the coming years for Safe Tech? Well, we uh, have very, very ambitious goals, and that's my fault, I guess. Um, but, uh, you know, we we've applied and are able to use our nonprofit status to go over or to apply and compete very competitively for some very large contract opportunities to build out the national framework for the first responder network authority, which our Brazos County Sheriff's department is a leader department in the utilization of that particular broadband spectrum for public safety. Uh, just, so some numbers that you guys should know, they're numbers that obviously helped me uh, convince myself that leaving Teeks was the right thing to do for me and my family is over the next 20 years, that AT&T who leases that spectrum is going to pay in $18 billion to the First Responder Network Authority. And after they cover their expenses, they have to reinvest every dollar in public safety technology. That's $15.5 billion over the next 20 years. It's just under $300 million a year uh, that's going to be invested. Well, the 10 companies that we're currently working with are working towards those contract opportunities. So we're not talking about bringing small companies that just operate at two to five people. You know, we have ambitions of spinning out companies that do, we think that we can spin out two to five companies every year for the next five years that will grow from 10 to 40 employees each in the next five years. So, you know, we don't think it's unrealistic to put 500 to a thousand jobs. Uh, and that's, you know, us just being a part of what is already going to happen in 2021, the day that that George H.W. Bush Combat Development Center opens. Uh, when that opens, it, it is crystal clear and been made clear to the entire country that the Army is focusing its reinvestments through Army Futures Command uh, and that's why we're so privileged that a lot of our members are getting to take advantage of that. We've had seven companies that are actually either competing. Obviously, COVID has uh, prevented a lot of that South by Southwest opportunity for our companies. Uh, but we have had seven companies that were uh, selected or are directly working with Army Futures Command now. And one of the companies, which we're going to be spinning out in the community here, is called Intelligent Nanofiber is a finalist in the $100,000 human challenge for Army Futures Command. So we do a, a presentation on that tomorrow, and then we'll pre be presenting to those people, uh, we'll be presenting to Army Futures Command in uh, a little bit later in July. 
Well, that company is going to create 12 to 15 jobs by December of this year in Brazos Valley. So, you know, I just, I don't think I answered your question very directly, but our ambitions are to build out a national ecosystem. Uh, we just created our national advisory council, which gives us six regions is really how we've broke down the country. And the beautiful part about our membership is we will be able to provide offices and services across the country to our members. But we know that the focal point for access to end users and access to facilities for testing and evaluation and access to high quality workforce that you can build your company around and high quality schools that your children can go to, the Brazos Valley is the place that you wanna be. And it's harder and harder when we bring companies here for them to answer why they don't already operate in the Brazos Valley. Big ambition driving big goals for sure. Matt, uh, obviously when we have our launch grow and locate going, we shop a lot of advantages to people who are wanting to get their businesses either off the ground or growing or, or locating here. And talent is one of those advantages. How does that play into this partnership and what Safe Tech and the EDC are going to be doing. Absolutely, Steve. As I reflect on some of the comments that Caleb was making about his vision, I bet you and our listeners will be able to see why this partnership is such an advantage to us as a community. Um, but really, when I think about the success of the Brazos Valley and our future, as we all know, it rests in the hands of the next generation. And in our case, our job is to help launch, grow, and locate companies here in the Brazos Valley, but an essential part of that entire equation for success is talent. And so we're so fortunate to have the talent pool of employment here in the Brazos Valley, and part of our mission and goal, as you know, is really to provide wonderful employment opportunities for those coming up in the workforce, uh, the Generation Zs, if you will, of the next generation and that's really happening and so Caleb through Safe Tech is very much supporting every single one of those goals and and part of our mission as an organization so once again we're just couldn't be happier to be able to partner with he and his team and if you'd like more information about both of our, both of our organizations you're going to make safetech.org and brassesvalleyedc.org and get all the details not only on this partnership but what each of our organizations are doing to make business in the Brassus Valley better and of course a great mission that make safe tech has in helping our first responders and our military members gentlemen thank you for the time greatly appreciate it thanks guys thanks